From the Atlantic City Convention Center in Atlantic City, New Jersey, game two features Penn State against Pennsylvania. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to the second game of this afternoon's doubleheader with Digger Phelps, Dwayne Stats, and if game two is anything like game one, you'll stay right where you are. Penn comes in off a 22-win season last year. Digger, they're trying to replace a lot of talent. Well, they had a great backcourt for two years with Jerome Allen as well as Matt Mahoney. The guy that's taken over this year, the senior at 6'5", Ira Bowman, who is second-team All-Ivy, coming off the bench. He's the one guy that makes things happen offensively as we take a look at what Penn brings to the table in the Ivy League challenge in Dartmouth and Princeton for the Ivy League championship. Penn State, four wins, no losses to start the year. The Nittany Lions trying to continue to make up ground in the Big Ten. They've done a great job so far, and they have a great duo in the backcourt to start. The leader of that duo, though, when you take a look at Glue 218, Pete Lasicki makes things happen offensively. Great shooter, knows how to get open. And you can talk about Dunn, but to me, Lasitki's the reason why Penn State this year, knowing what's going on in the Big Ten basketball program, for Jerry Dunn to get it done himself, looking for an NCAA bid. The Quakers have been with a win and two losses coming into this one. The Nittany Lions from Penn State, four wins in as many outings. Back in a moment. Now, Body Shaping, America's favorite TV fitness show, introduces a fabulous foursome of home video workouts. Body Shaping Step Aerobics to burn fat and lose weight at home. Body Shaping Abs to get rock-hard abdominals. Body Shaping Arms, Chest, and Shoulders to tone and shape your entire upper body. Body Shaping Hips, Thighs, and Buns to get shapely hips, slender thighs, and firm buns. Come on, you can do this. I know you can. Body Shaping from ESPN Home Video, only $12.95 each. Buy them today. Available at Suncoast Motion Picture Company. The last thing this planet needs is another goofy gadget taking up valuable space. Yeah. Must be why Proform invented the Space Saver Crosswalk. They don't call it Space Saver for nothing. <laughs> get it? Then get it. making up my holiday list when I suddenly realized mm, I already have everything. Then it struck me. I haven't had one of your delicious Monterey Ranch chicken sandwiches in a long time. That irresistible combination of Wendy's whole breast filet, creamy ranch dressing blended with bacon and Monterey Jack. I'd pay a million dollars to have one right now. Delivering. Wendy's Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. It's back. We're at the Atlantic City Convention Center as this Atlantic shootout continues, pitting Penn State against Pennsylvania. And the starting lineups for the second game. See Ira Bowman, they're counting on him to provide that leadership, the 6'5 senior out of Newark. Lyron will be out front. Frank Brown, Krug at center. Bill Guthrie in there. And Fran Dunphy. Out of LaSalle in 1970, sixth year at Pennsylvania, coming off that undefeated season in the Ivy League last year. For Penn State, Pete Lasicki, the 6'4 sophomore, a three-point shooter, very intelligent player, teams up with Dan Earl out front. Calvin Booth, he'll be fun to watch at center. And Jerry Dunn, first season as a head coach, his 13th season overall at Penn State, 12 years as an assistant there and taking over this year. He takes over for Bruce Parkhill, who had resigned. And we are set to play basketball in game two. Booth jumping center against Guthrie. And Dan Earl 
Comes up with it. Man to man by Penn State. By Penn. And Penn State runs the offense. Masicki, now Earl, the first shot of three-pointer, not going to go. And the rebound to Ira Bowman. Rebounding will be a factor for Penn to stay in this game early to establish their patience and moving screens on offense. And with a basketball, Bowman to the right corner. Pass low, and Kurt. That's Tim Kerr, the 6'9 senior, first bucket of the game. He's the one guy that can play in the post and must score in the post to get Penn's perimeter shooting game on track. Nick Phil Williams. On the right side of the sickie. Dart into the lane and out. Bowman looking for the steal. He's quick. Earl takes it inside the lane. And a charge coming on an elbow. Dan Earl will be charged with the offensive foul. Marty McDonald on the play, making a call. Push off with the arm. Watch Earl as he goes through. Can't push off. Right there it comes now. Yes. Marty McDonald making a call from the outside. It's a foul. Jamie Lyron, the point guard for the Quakers. Bowman across the Frank Brown. Good shooter. He'll pop. It's not going to go. The freshman Frank Brown missing the three-point attempt. The Nittany Lions back. Dan Earl. Secunda. The ball knocked away. We have a whistle. 18-29 to play. In the first foul, half. The Bill foul Guthrie, against Bill Guthrie, the 6'9 senior out of Philadelphia. To do the inbounding. Pete Lasicki. Earl into Calvin Booth, and a little left-handed hook is good. Booth, the 6'11 red shirt freshman. Two two time. From Rennersburg, Ohio. Jerry Dunn really likes his style of play. Even though he's a little thin, he can play inside. The tip back goes to Krug. Off the shot by Guthrie. So Krug has all four of the pin points so far. Krug's a workhorse. He'll be all over the place. And watch him take charges on defense before the day's over. The Suki hits three. Automatic. That is three. He is a 54% shooter from three-point range. Looks like the opening tease. That's how he gets it. That weak side reversal jump shot. You've got to play him tight or switch on the screen. Three Pullman. They work it to Lyra. Back out front. Krug. Bounce pass into the corner. Bowman scrambles after it, back out front. This one knocked away by Lasicki, but it's kept in play, and Krug comes up with it. He'll jump it from the baseline. It's going to be long, and the ball down to Glenn Secunda. I thought the paint is patient that Fran Duffy's looking for. Duffy knows that they can play with pace. Secunda tries it. It's not going to go from about 17. Bowman rebounding and back into the front court. Byron underneath Bowman tries to go baseline, and we have a whistle. Bowman contested along the baseline there. Good move inside by Bowman, getting open, and, and when you can take a look First at Ira Bowman, foul, strong guard going to the hole. Watch the reversal inside, looking, cuts under, no one has him. Goes up really strong, no foul there, draws the foul. Penn, by the way, Definitely last Saturday, line. tough loss to St. Louis on the road. Two key turnovers Starts being down one with ball. about a minute and a half to go. Come back Wednesday night, down against Townsend State, come back from being behind, win it. Confidence factor up for it. Penn. With a pair, and this is the first one on the foul charge to Calvin Booth. Penn Dunphy not afraid to go to a little zone, mix it up, try to keep Penn State guessing to what defense is being played. And Coleman converts them to tie the game at five. Love Earl with the ball because it allows the sickie to get open. And this is one of the backcourts in the Big Ten. When you look at guards around the country, this is as good as any backcourt that the Big Ten has this year. And Earl across the court. Secunda wanted to go to Booth Low, but it's deflected out of bounds. The ball belongs to Penn State. Guthrie had a hand on it. 5-5 tie with 16.49 to play in the first half from the Atlantic City Convention Center. Inbound out to Earl. Pops it right back to Lasecki for three. Oh, he's he's Lasecki. <laughs> hey, Glenn, he's just confident. you got to make him put it on the floor. You can't leave him open at all, no matter what defense you play. 8-5, Penn State. Tim Krug. Tim Guthrie. 
Lyron working out front to Frank Brown, the freshman. Back across the court, Lyron, baseline, tries to sneak his way in. It's not going to go. And the rebound of Phil Williams, the 265-pound junior. Masecki inside, back to Earl. Earl at the line and down the lane, drops it off to Booth, off the glass, not going to go. Williams tries to put it back, no good. And as Booth tried to tip it through, a whistle and a foul. That will be a problem for Penn today, offensive rebounding. When you take a look at what Phil Williams brings to the table, as they call him, big house, strong, 275, keeps it alive. Booth lean and mean going to the glass. We get one tip coming in. Watch Big House get a piece of it, misses it. But Booth just goes over the top of those long arms and grabs it and gets fouled. This will be a problem for Penn. Rebounding both ends of the floor. Booth for two is a 75% free throw shooter. Hits the first one. And converts both. That gives Penn State a five-point lead, 10-5. Jamie Lyron into the front court for the Quakers. Tyler Brown working against Lasicki. Guthrie, he misses a three-point attempt. Lasicki starts back for Penn State. And that's the problem when you're a perimeter shooting team and no offensive rebounding because you're not hot. This is why Penn State will get these possessions and no second chances. Williams wants to take it to the glass, but a whistle before he started. And the foul assessed Personal against foul. Penn. This one against Frank Brown. That's his first. And the third team foul, 15-40 left to play in the first half, 10-5, Penn State with a timeout on the floor. Light, the silver bullet, it shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies! Every day, America Online is making it a little easier for people to live, work, and play. With point-and-click access to instant news and sports, financial updates, online magazines, shopping and travel, and easy access to the Internet. Call now for America Online. A new way to use your computer, to communicate, and have fun. Call 1-800-249-9400 for your free America Online Startup Kit with free software and 10 free online hours. It's everything you need to get online. Call now. The last thing this planet needs is another goofy gadget taking up valuable space. Yeah. Must be my pro form invented the Space Saver Crosswalk. They don't call it Space Saver for nothing. <laughs> get it? Then get it. Penn State leading 10-5 from the Atlantic City shootout. 15-40 left to play in the first half. You're going to double dose of hoop action tomorrow here on the Deuce. Butler and Marshall match up at noon. Marshall is under the reign of former Rick Pitino assistant Billy Donovan. And at 2 p.m., the women take center stage as 17th ranked Duke hosts Seton Hall. All tomorrow on ESPN2. 15.40 to play in the first half. Penn State leading with the basketball. Pete Lasicki will then bound off the baseline. Man to man defense by Penn. Inside Booth has the ball stripped by Guthrie. It's loose on the floor and goes out of bounds. Bowman really gutsy, knows how to get to it. Ira Bowman Brown, they just really hustle. They say Bowman might be the best player in the Ivy League this year. Number 13 right there for Penn. Second team all Ivy coming off the bench, especially behind Allen and Mahoney. That shows you what kind of depth he has in his game. Earl handling the ball for the Nittany Lions. Low for Booth. That ball deflected away, and Krug comes up with it. Lyra into the front court. Krug baseline against Booth. Takes it to the glass and gets it to drop. Solid player. That's what is needed. You've got to go inside when you can. Krug's the guy to do it, and that will allow the perimeter shot to become uncontested because they'll concentrate on Krug defensively. And Earl. 
junior guard. The second. Earl pops back. And he traveled with the ball. He was trying to get it to the big man, Phil Williams, but could not hang on. Now the Quakers make a change, and Nat Graham reports in, replacing Frank Brown. So they have Graham at 6'7", and Guthrie at 6'9", in the game. And the big man, Ken Krug, still out there. So Penn goes with its big lineup. They have Bowman and Lyron. Guthrie over Booth, not going to go. Guthrie keeps it alive. Bowman has it slapped away underneath as he tried to take it to the hoop. And the foul coming against Penn State. That's just, just hustle inside. You know, Krug makes a pretty good play inside. We'll see what happens to find it. Krug sees the weak side. Penn does this a lot. They'll throw the skip pass, which means go over the top of everything, get the shot, but then follow your shot or get a piece of the rebound. Booth just puts it down, goes into Bowman. Goes up strong, gets fouled. Bill Williams charged with a foul, and Ira Bowman is 68% shooter from the line. And this is the first of two here. Well, a lot of injuries when you look at uh, Penn State right now. Aaron Jack gets a concussion the other night. Big win at Tennessee by 12 for Penn State and Jerry Dunn. And of course, the guy to wait to come back. It just had Matt Gunio just yep. had surgery on that foot stress factor. Probably get back next Sunday against Tennessee Chattanooga. He's Solid player. Tough player, like a coach on the floor. Out of bounds, deflected by Penn, so Penn State will hang on. Penn State leading by three. It's 10-7. John Carlton, red shirting. Got the bad knee. Gaudio. They need Gaudio. He's he's really a solid leader for that team. Earl hits for three. That's three for Dan you Earl. Earl. Earl in the safety zone, and then you add Gaudio to that lineup, and then you got a punch of scoring and defense. 13-7 Penn State. And the foul. foul, number 32, This Masicki. one will be charged against Pete Masicki. Got his first. Got, <laughs> got him on the bench again. Last year, he was like a student assistant coach, and there he is, nice sport jacket, tying glasses, sitting on the middle of the bench, and uh, knows the game, coaches the game, great leader on this team. The guys have a lot of respect for him. Donald Moxley reports into the game for Penn. Moxley. 6-3 senior guard. Sarah Brown. Moxley at the top of the key. Right side. Matt Graham. Bowman wants to go down the lane against Masuki, trying to drop it off underneath, but the ball is knocked out of bounds and belongs to Pennsylvania. That's a little quick, because when you have five new faces on the floor, this is a whole new lineup for Penn, and Bowman's the guy that's got to take over with his experience in the backcourt, and, and when you take a look at what Coach Dumphy's doing, they do sub a lot, rotate their players, go 8, 9, 10 sometimes, mix defenses, so the rhythm takes a little time to get consistency early in the season. Guthrie gets a breather, and Paul Romanchik is into the game. Donovan Williams in for Penn State, replacing Glenn Secunda. And this one will go for Moxley. Donald Moxley with a pair, his first entry into the scorebook. Good three-point shooter, but not afraid to go to the glass. 13-9, Penn State leading with the ball. Penn will not go away. You're not going to blow them out. They'll play smart, be patient, stay in it. Penn State knows this. Jerry Dunn, first year, 12 years as an assistant to, to Park Hill, and, and now it's his turn to take over. Excellent. I almost hired this guy. I, I took Fran, Fran McCafferty to be my assistant at Notre Dame when he was at Lehigh, and Jerry Dunn was the guy I almost took from Park Hill. Lissicki hits for two. Talking before the game, things work out for the Bucs. He's got a great backcourt, good coach. Jerry Dunn will do an excellent job in his first year at Big Ten. January, moving into the Bryce Jordan Center. They give him a great facility. 16,000 against the Gophers in Minnesota, January 11th, and they'll be there. A six-point game here, 15-9. Ben down, looking for a shot. Shot clock down to nine. This one put up by two, and he missed. Got to love Nate Graham. Little push off got away with it. They called the walk from Drew Pop before that. He's a pit bull. He goes in and gets it. 6'6 six, six from Miami, Florida. Coral Gables knows how to uh, play the physical game. And Dumpy, nice tie, nice jacket off early. He likes to just, an excellent teacher. And that's what he does well, teaches in the classroom. 
in the Wharton School. A course. And Bowman's like a teaching He's assistant. Masecki. Out in favor here of Donovan Williams. Now Masecki's going to pop from the line and puts it up and in. What confidence. What confidence he has. Shooting the ball. Great perimeter player. Not afraid to go to the hole either. 18-9. Bowman takes it over. When they need to, Iro go for it. Bowman for the year hitting 50% from the floor overall and almost 50% from three. Little 1-3-1 one, one zone now by the Quakers taking, knowing where Lasicki's going to be, but taking that rhythm of that man offense to see if they can shoot it against the zone. Lasicki along three hits. He has four yes. three-pointers and 14 Lissicki. points in this game. Well, the wing's supposed to pick him up, and he didn't. He left him alone to play the 1-3-1. The opposite wing must match to that. It's a 10-point game and a whistle on the other end of the court. 21-11 with 11.34 left to play, and we have a timeout on the floor. Penn State up by a full 10. I don't know. About 500 a year. How much do you spend every year on long distance? Uh, four or $500. Really? It's horrendous. How'd you like to get some of that back? Wait, what? Are you kidding? Just get Sprint Sense. Now, on top of 10 cents a minute, you'll get cash back every year you're with Sprint. The more you call, the more you get back. Give me some money. Give me some money back. It pays to stay with Sprint. Of course, you aren't getting anything back unless you call Sprint first. Call for 10 cents a minute evenings and weekends. Now with cash back. Santa Bats are coming, Santa Bats are coming, Santa Bats are coming, Santa Bats are coming to your town. Watch out, Santa, look around, Santa's we're coming, so we are. New Coca-Cola Santa Packs, the only real holiday refreshment. Look for this display at your store. Holiday refreshments like we bring, a wrap of Santa Pack, it's always a real thing. Yeah, it's true. People prefer the taste of Crispix mix to the usual party mix. But does that really make a difference? Look at the time. I've got to get to my aerobics class. Right, she's, <laughs> she's got, got a headache. headache. Crispix mix has a special recipe. That unique Crispix cereal look. More Crispix mix? And that exceptional taste guests prefer. So this year, make Kellogg's Crispix mix and party on. Here's why you can't lead Pete Lasicki against anything. Bowman's late. Penn plays the 1-3-1 one, one zone. As you saw on number 13, Ira Bowman, late getting out to where Pete Lasicki is. You must know how to find him. Know his number, whether if it's man, zone. He is hot, number 32 for Penn State. Don't leave him alone. Four for four shooting threes. Pretty good percentage, 54%. The foul just prior to the timeout charge to Donovan Williams. Pennsylvania with the basketball and down by 10 points. Trying to replace five starters from last year's team. And to Krug, right corner of the key, off to Moxley. Donald Moxley. Next up against Damian McKnight. Ira Bowman. Bowman to the baseline and a jumper off the glass. Still in there in the lane fighting, and that ball finally knocked loose by Jared Stevens. Lasicki off the right side. McKnight, McKnight wanted to shoot and lost the ball. Deflected and away out of bounds. Penn State will hang on. 11.05 to play. And Donovan Williams inbounds to McKnight. They can switch off with Williams and McKnight. They're a little more athletic, right. a little quicker yeah. than Earl and Lasecki. Well, it doesn't matter. McKnight's a great point guard. Got a lot of good quickness. And Jerry Benson, you know, had that stress fracture. Came back with it. He can play. A whistle as Metzger went to the bucket. And as we said earlier, Krug will take the charge. He's all over the floor. Gutsy player for Fran Dumphy's Quakers of Pennsylvania. So the charge against Jeremy Metzger, the 6'10 junior. Bowman getting a little rest. He deserves one. Played very hard, but they're down 10. Crucial time now for 10 to get back in this game under 10. Lyra, and Graham. We're working the right side. Now Lyra again. Inside Graham worked his way. 
Drops it off. This is romantic looking. This will be a problem for Penn right now. Not many good scores on the floor. And if you go inside against Metzger or anybody in the front line, as you can see, you've got too many trees to shoot over. And it's going to be really hard for Penn, who's not a post-offensive team, inside team, to score points inside. Uh, possession exchange. Pennsylvania hangs on. Moxley driving baseline. Drew trying to put it back. The ball down to Donovan Williams, but it's stripped there. And Moxley. Good steal. Moxley to the glass. It's not going to go. What a pop. Wow. <laughs> McKnight back. Masecki down to the baseline. And a jump around to the corner. He hits for two. Star Wars. You know, the, the kid is a freak on Star He knows everything written, movies, everything about Star Wars. And he plays his offensive shooting game like in Star Wars. Groove off to Lyra. Moxley top of the key. Now Lyra. Under 10 minutes to play in the half. Moxley. This is a three attempt. It is no good. The rebound pulled down by Metzger, and we have another whistle with 9.41. As you can see, offensive rebounding, no show for Penn. Defensive rebounding, the force, the physical play of the front line of Penn State is the reason why the Quakers are down 12. Secunda reports back. He'll replace Donovan Williams. Bowman's back in. You need him. Guy Bowman. Can, you know, the other guys can get this thing going for Four Penn, too, is Brown. Frank Brown, number 15, good player. Tough, gutsy kid from Beverly Hills, California. Watch him come in and make a contribution to the offense. Secunda missed the jumper. Oh, quite a battle inside. Jared Stevens battling. Another freshman. Yep. Rebounding a factor in this game, and when you take a look at Penn State on the boards, 11 to 6. That's why Penn's in trouble. Penn State's basketball with 9.22 left. Whitney Lions leading 23 to 11. The inbound comes out to Earl. Secunda bounce pass. He's going low to Stevens, the freshman inside against Krug. It will not go down for him, and it's out of bounds, belonging to Penn State. Penn State hitting 20, hitting 62 percent from the floor so far. Lasecki departs in favor of Donovan Williams, and Pennsylvania just 29 percent from the floor. That's shooting the perimeter shots where you can't make them and no offensive rebound, so you can't get that percentage back up. And Earl tries to work his way inside the lane, stripped by Lyron. But the whistle there stops the clock with just over nine minutes left. Foul on number three, so Jamie Lyron. His first team of fifth. Commits his first foul, five team fouls against Penn. On the line. Dan Earl to the line, an 87% free throw shooter. Is he was the 93 Dan high school player of the year in New Jersey. Great shoot. He shoots the freeze when he gets the zone. And he gets it this time. Coming in, 7 of 10 from three point territory for the year. I was kidding me before the game. He's talking to Matt and Aaron Jack about guys on a team personality. Said, we got to get him a tanning lane. He says, too white. We got to get him a tanning lane. Nice contrast with the road uniform, however. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'll tell you, an excellent White's guard. another story. Yeah, yeah. And then they said, well, you think he's cool. You know, I said, well, give me some personalities on the team. And, and you know, Gadiel's giving me all the statistics because he's a student coach again, sitting there in his nice suit. Earl misses both. Unusual. Secunda charged with a foul here. No, well, reaching out. He's a transfer from Syracuse. Good Romantic's player. Back. You know, another solid 6'8 player that, you know, look at Jim Beheim in Syracuse this year. That team will creep up on the Big East with Georgetown as well as Villanova, the Cats. Secunda, a good offensive rebounder. He's got a little swagger about him, which is not all bad. No, no. And, and I think knowing that he's in the Big Ten, he's got confidence going for himself, and, and this is a year for him at 6'8". He's had some good rebounding games uh, already, and, and I just like what he does to the front line. Romantic at the line for the first time this year. Misses the shot, and Jeremy Metzger. Metzger's a workhorse. He's a workhorse. Knows his job description. Rebound, set screens. Earl shoots off the screen, front of the rim and out. The rebound to Ira Bowman, quickly down court. The Lyron puts it up and in off the glass. Good explosion by Penn in that fast break. Bowman to Lyron. A 10-point game, 
Dan Earl back. Donovan Williams. Little zone again by the Quakers. 2-3 zone this time. Earl takes the pass. Secunda wants to go underneath Stevens, but we have no shot and a foul. Well, when you ro rotate over, Nate Graham comes over too quick and doesn't adjust to driving by Earl. Graham charged with a foul his first, and Frank Brown reports back into the game for Penn as Graham leaves. Now Phil Williams replaces Jared Stevens. How about Stevens? Yeah. Goes 245, yeah. and now Williams comes Joe back guy. around 270. Yeah, Joe Paterno guy. Good football. 16,000 receipts. Finally, Joe Paterno loosened up and got him a basketball game. Oscar has one rejected. Lyron working his way inside the lane. Coleman. Back out to Lyron. Lyron going to restore to the baseline and is cut off foul there. Foul by Donovan Williams. Donovan Williams, good quickness, good defensive player, and guarding, uh, you know, a solid, solid First guard, foul. Lyron. Number 12, Donovan Williams, his second, team eight. Good penetration. Lyman goes down baseline. Williams, Donovan has him, cuts him off, bumps him with the body. For the Nittany Lions. Yeah, yeah, you foul. Booth back in for Metzger. Maseki returns to the game. He replaces Donovan Williams. At the line, Jamie Lyron. Just one of two this year from the line coming into this game. And converts the first one earning himself another one. Played well last week against St. Louis. Really aggressive. You know, doesn't show up. And then all of a sudden he's there for two or three points. Smart player. Typical Ivy League point guard. Lefty. That I mean, he's left. Is there shortage now? Yeah. He's there now. Especially shooters. 23-14. Lyra. Off pass low. They return it to Lyron. Back to Krug. A little baseline jumper on the turnaround, and that's good. Well, he's getting the point. He's got six points inside. If he gets some perimeter shots going, look out. Oh, uh, second three. Ooh. Williams trying to go back to the board. Well, Manchik came up with the rebound. Lyron. Here's the freshman, Frank Brown, missing. Secunda has the ball, and it's knocked away. Out of bounds, belonging to Penn State. 7.34 left to play and a timeout on the floor. The score, 23-16, Penn State. Excuse me. Okay, you drop this back there. For the best selection and prices on Lee Jeans, shop Lanco, your one-stop shop for total value. and the Blues battle the Great One and the Kings in L.A. tonight at 10.30. Face it, the NHL rules on ESPN2. Well, what helps Tim Krug from Cheltenham, PA, from Penn Charter? In the post, you start doing this, read what you have. Phil Williams can't get out on this great post move. Step out, read, hands low, shoot over. Now, if they go to double down on Krug, this will open up the perimeter shot which Penn needs to do with Bowman, with Brown, with Lyman. Krug, tough player, getting towards his average. 
love his game. Offense, debate. Just a gutsy kid at 6'9". The question is, will Penn be able to step up and do that, hitting 39% from the floor overall this year coming into this game? Well, he shot 28% in the first half last Saturday against St. Louis, and they got back in the game through. It was down to the last minute, and two turnovers killed Penn. Not for shooting. They're tough to knock out. Secunda down to the corner. Calvin Booth back to Secunda along the baseline as he starts to move the baseline and is blocked over there. And a foul charge to Penn. But this is where you got to know your scouting report. Brown knows this guy's not going to go one-on-one -on -one and score, so stay off him. Let him shoot. See, he overcommits on the play, gets it back. Now watch the defense by Brown. Rut lunges, gives him the baseline. See, if he protected with his right foot to the baseline, he could have taken the charge. Brown assess the foul. Secunda to the line, a 65% free throw shooter. And hits the first. He has another one coming, 24-16. One shot. Oh. Averaging a little under 14 points a game. Converts both ends of this one. A nine point game now. Let's go. Let's go. Time for Penn just to cut it to five. Improve. Over the big man, Williams hits. So See, Krug with right. two. And Williams Andy can't Krug. get up that hand quick enough, and Krug knows that with his quick dribble, gets the shot off before the hand from Williams gets to him. That's twice he's been burned, Phil Williams, by Krug. And Earl handling the ball. Krug comes out. Good help by Krug. Picked off by Tim Krug. Now Lyron. Guthrie. Out to Lyron. They push the ball to Bowman. Guthrie again. Byron and a nice job by Earl finding the screen. Byron again. Krug sets the screen. Good Earl fights that again. Krug, he'll put it up. And misses this shot. Booth with a rebound, but it's knocked away by Frank Brown. It goes out of bounds. Belonging to Penn State. Booth will leave the game. Jeremy Metzger reports back in. It's interesting to talk about Penn in the Ivy League. They got Princeton January 6th at Princeton. And Dartmouth's favored to win that conference this year, but Harvard could be a spoiler. But Penn and Princeton always battle early in the season. And the last game would be at Penn in the flesh on March 5th. Oh, Phil Williams, when he gets set yes. to move, you better get out of the way. Fight fire with fire. He's just a cooler. I can score two, and he just did. Oh, nice play. And a charge. Great defensive play by Metzger. Assessed against oh. Ira Bowman. He tried to force his way along the baseline. Watch the pit bull inside. I love Phil Williams. Yeah. Inside, go after it. Hook you. Got you. Take you. We're even. You score against me, I'll score against you. Williams. A 27-18 ball game. Penn State leading. Earl, the junior guard. And a foul. This one's against Bowman again. Taking the pass. Secunda, and Ira Bowman picking up two quick fouls here. Well, Bowman does not want to get in foul trouble. Three dump. He can't afford to lose him in this first half fouls. You know, he went to Seton Hall Pratt with Stanford All-American Brevin Knight, so that was a pretty good backward, huh? When you got Bowman and Knight playing together. They still communicate with each other once they were boys. Worked together this summer in the Newark area. Stamp. Bowman's going to leave the game. Yeah. Nat Graham comes in. Don't miss him. You know, five plus to go. You, you can't afford to get him in foul trouble. Dumpy knows. Secunda converts both this time as well. 29-18. 38 to play. First half. Look at that pace. They screen well. They reverse the ball. Fran Duffy doing a lot of teaching this year, Penn, especially with new players. They came to come together. Groove finds Graham inside. It's oh, yeah. the foul, but it's tipped back by Bill Guthrie. Field goal, Matt Graham. Hang around, get a little Groove. easy points. Archbishop Ryan, Philadelphia area. 6-9. Asiki. Across the top of the key. Back to Secunda. Jumper 15. Not going to oh. go. The putback attempt oh. by Williams and a whistle. Big house. He takes up space. 
Uh, you put Williams yeah. and Metzger in there at the Ooh. same time as they have You can now. tell by the trunks. You know, when you get those long Dark trunks, there's long trunks and there's long trunks. trunks. And these guys have long the trunks. Yeah. That's a lot of trunk. Now now. You got you got a lot of material. That, that probably takes three pairs of guard pants. Those are Earl's pants three times over because Big House says, hey, I'm going inside, take up my space, because this is going to be my house, and that's why he's at the line. Crew charged with the foul, his second. Williams at the line, hits the first. That's ten team fouls. Now Krug's out of the game. Yeah, and that really hurts, because you take Krug out, Bowman out. This is where this gap goes from ten, maybe to 15, 16 halftime. Penn's going to have problems catching up in the second half, especially on the board. Williams converts them both. Vigor Kapitanovich is into the game, replacing Krug. Lyron. Off the top of the key against Earl, and he flies to the basket. Not going to go. Yes, the and house. Big Phil Williams. You got, you got him in there, Phil Baby. Earl. Secunda, and it's slapped away. The ball goes out of bounds, slapped out as Graham broke that one up. 4.35 to play in the first half. Watch Williams really take up place. Big House says, go on up. Now watch him come from the lane, the outside. It's tipped loose. He just snags it, finds it. Here's the play. Earl inside Metzger. Penn cannot match up against Penn State's front line. And these guys are coming off the bench. Yep, coming off the bench. And this is the kind of depth Penn State has in their front line. Very done, smart coach. Getting into the crew. He's a rookie. 12 years in the system for Park Hill. Graham, Secunda, forcing the turnover there as Graham traveled with the basketball. We we're talking before the game. I, I said, Jerry, I said, you know, when Bruce got out, what, what was it? I mean, you've been you, you, assistant for 12 years. Did you expect it? And then I talked to Mac Gaudio, and I said, were you happy to have Jerry Dunn as a coach? Yes. Dunn's answer to me was, he was tired of it. Five years, part of the last five years. Time to get out, and he got out at the right time. He may be back. Replacing Metzger. It's going to be tough. Well, he'd to accomplished a lot at oh. the state. Lasecki hitting. Yeah. Automatic, huh? Yep. Always on a reversal. He's open, and he hits it. No offense for Penn. Down 15. They're looking for anything. And there's oh, Booth. A shot blocked by Booth. Booth has an 88 inch wingspan. Now Earl. Secunda in and out. There's Big Phil Williams. Drop time out, Franny. Take a 20. Phil Williams. 37 20, and it's. A timeout on the floor. 20 seconds. 20 second timeout with three minutes and 22 seconds 20 left. Seconds Boy, you get out. Big Phil Williams down there taking up space and combine that with Lasecki, who has 18, makes it a tough way to go. Well, Penn's had a great run the last two years with Jerome Allen as well as Matt Mahoney in the backcourt. And, you know, you lose five people. You got five new starters, even though Bowman was around last year. And this is just a confidence factor. They had a big win coming back from Townsend State this past week, a tough loss at St. Louis, but the beef, the big house, the boards is the issue. And, you know, four of those five players in one sense or the other playing professionally this yeah. year. You got Allen, Minnesota, yep. Maloney's up at Grand Rapids, and uh, Eric Moore's in France, and uh, Bryce in Sweden. So four of the five are in pro ball. They're trying to replace five starters. And a great run in the Ivy League. Byron on the right side out front. Moxley trying to shake Lasecki but can't do it. And see, he's got Krug and Bowman back in because he knows he can't get this thing blown out with three minutes to go and a half. Krug, a jumper over Calvin Booth. See, a lot of coaches do that. And sometimes you gamble. You let a guy stay even though he's got two. That's been a new trend. Let him play in the first half until you get three so you don't get blown out. So smart move by Fran Duffy. Get him back in the game to see if they can cut it under 10 at half time. Bill Williams looking low, tries to reverse it, contested by Guthrie, and Earl comes up for the loose ball out front, right back into Phil Williams. Now Lasecki, oh my, for three. Is he all world? Lasecki. All Ivy. 40, wow. 22. Forget the Ivy. That's Penn State, man. Proof. Jumper, baseline, this side, ball away, and it's down to Booth. See, no offensive rebounds by Penn at all. And, and, and that's why your shooting percentage is low, because even if you miss, you make that. Look at this, there we go. Lasecki again! <laughs> Another three, and he has 24. He's got his file on 
his face. He says, I can't help it. They're just going in. It's one of those days. Well, Kentucky with 24 points. And a foul along the baseline as Coleman tried to take it to the hoop and draws the whistle. Boy, playing, playing the way you can. You're in that rhythm, and Matt Masecki just knows. Gets the foul, but still. It is his second. Tough freshman. Nine. Williams needs a little blow. He's going off. The city lead. just total confidence in the shot. Great release in the shot. Gary Stevens. So they have Jared the Stevens and Jeremy off Metzger. The foul line. 13 is Ira Bowman. End of this game now. Ira Bowman at the line. Penn State on a 20 to 6 run. Building a 43 to 22 lead with a minute 58 left in the first half. <laughs> Bowman rims it. Bowman knows. They've got problems. Duffy knows they've got problems. Bowman hits this one. So a timeout on the floor. 158 to play. 43-23 Penn State. To apply for a Discover card, all you have to do is give us a ring at 1-800-DISCOVER. There's no annual fee. And with our cashback bonus award, the sooner you call, the sooner we can return the fever. It pays to discover. It's popping up at Burger King. Toy Story puppets from Disney's latest adventure movie now in theaters. Get all four high-quality puppets for your kids. $1.99 each with any great-tasting value meal. I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant. But it does. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. Now you got proof. Guaranteed. We talk about great backcourts. Last year, Penn, of course, with Matt Maloney and then Jerome Allen. But watch this kid. If you talk about Dan Earl, no. Pete Lasicki just in that rhythm, shooting the threes like Michael Jordan that year. He puts his hands up. I don't know. They're just going in. I can't help it. They're hot. I'm hot. I'm hot. It's and Lasicki and Earl, as good as backcourt to Penn State, as Allen and Maloney were last year to the University of Pennsylvania. Yep. Backwards, gonna... important. They'll be tough in that Big Ten again. Yes, they will. Because the front line, I love the beef on the front line, the boards. And Gotti, you know, he's talking today, Matt Gotti, he's just, you know, I feel like I'm the, I'm the Cal Ripken going the other way. Streak's not playing. <laughs> with that stress fracture last year, he's out with a back injury. Dan Earl out front. Masuki, as we mentioned, 24 points. His okay. high is 26 against VMI. That's his career high. Pressure. Don't lose the rhythm offensively, Penn State, by getting too conservative. Secunda here with the ball. And now Penn needs to make a run before the half. Just get it to 14. Here. If you can get it to 14, that's what you're saying as a coach in timeout. Guys, just cut six points. If we get six points, 14 cuts in the second half. Three second violation gives the ball back to Penn. Byron. Moxley on the left side. Krug finds Bowman. Oh, Bowman down the lane. And boy, against Jared Stevens. He goes about 245. So you yeah. get Metzger, Phil Williams, and Stevens. A lot of beat. Yeah, especially in the Big Ten, you need him. Got to be aggressive on the board. See Penn State right now is a little conservative here. If they don't score and Penn scores again, you got a lot of things happen. Momentum that's called. Earl and Moxley out front as they work the shot clock. Closing in on 10. Earl stops at the line and gets rid of it just in time. It's no good. And on that baseline, that's Stevens who came up with the ball. It will go back to Penn with 38 seconds left. We have the highlights of the Maryland UCLA contest. Other top 25 scores and highlights at halftime. 
up in just a few moments. After 30 seconds left in the first half. Keep possession for Penn. They need to get a score before halftime. Proof baseline jumper. Ooh, no good, good but Bowman. Bowman is right there. Ira Bowman out of Newark puts it back. 43-27. Under 10. Earl has the ball stripped away. Loose now. Metzger gets one off for Trip Hook. Earl for yes. three, and it's going to yes. count. Earl, just before half, got it off at the buzzer. A three pointer, and it's 46 27. No wild pin. Trying to battle back and cut away at that lead. Just when you know you got things going your way, right? Absolutely. Loose ball, Penn can't grab it, goes off somebody's hands, and there he is. Dan Earl, the other guard, with Lasicki, hits the three for Penn State. Larry Beal will be along with Smart, Sport Mash. It's 46 27. Have you heard what Jim's driving? What's he got now? You can see this thing. What an incredible machine. Sleek, aerodynamic. Fast? Oh, yeah. That baby really moves. So what kind of engine does he have on that thing anyway? Nuclear reactor. You'd be amazed at what teenagers are driving these days. Red Bull Rudder, steady course, 355, helm on. For more information, call 1-800-USA-NAVY. Fourth and inches, Coach Brennan, he likes to punt. Huh? No way. Whoa. Check this out. Attention, Coach Bannon. <laughs> go for go it. For it. Be, a man. Be a man. Oh, what do you know, Steve? They're going to go for it. Just a reminder, when you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. Do you like my new hat? <laughs> Kozak drops back to pass. Jones is open in the end zone. Close it to Jones. Who dropped the ball? Bad call. Do the punting. Yep. Beyond the window electric, down a computer-generated blacktop, they ride. Carrying the remains of the day, they've come to the global village with software technology so bold. It can restore life to the fabric of a weary society and bring a touch of comfort to a material world grown hard. They are the ones who surf the net, the whiz kids of the information superhighway. Our truck has broken down. We need help. Better call Dad Collect. Mike! What, girl? I should dial 1-800-COLLECT? I'll save Dad lots of money on the car? And come Christmas, there'll be extra presents under the tree? Aw, oh, thanks, girl. 1-800-COLLECT. Hello, everybody. We're at halftime, and it is time to smash. I'm Larry Beal to get you caught up on all the college hoops and NFL action. We start with the battle for bragging rights in the state of Massachusetts. UMass versus Boston College. The winner gets the Celtics, maybe. The Minutemen came in at 4-0. BC looking good early. Scooney Penn with a three, and he was fouled. Boston College up 25-18. Second half, Marcus Camby can't stop the big man inside. The bank's open, UMass up by four. BC down 55-52. Donya Abrams takes care of that. He hangs and hits. And one, we're tied at 55. Abrams at 23. Not tied for long. Edgar Padilla drains the triple. UMass up 60-57. BC trying to respond. Going down low to Abrams. Get it out of here. UMass wins 65-57. Coach O'Brien wanted the foul. UMass was down 13 in the first half, but they win it to go 5-0. Donta Bright with 24. Villanova over Purdue, 67 to 50. That's out in Anaheim in the Wooden Classic. Kerry Kittles leading the way with 19 points. The Wildcats, 7-0. Maryland against UCLA. The second half of that twin bill at the Wooden Classic. There is the Wizard taking in the action. Toby Bailey to Jelani McCoy for the slam. Then McCoy, unstoppable down low. Bruins leading 36-23 at the break, but full court pressure by Maryland in the second half, and the Bruins turn it over and turn it over, and suddenly, Jim Herrick watches that lead shrink down to five. Bruins on the break, McCoy with the offensive rebound and the putback, and one.
McCoy doing it on offense, doing it on defense. That's Keith Booty. Get your booty out of there. UCLA would win at 73 to 63. The freshman, Jelani McCoy, had a triple-double, including a school record, 11 block shots. McCoy, for the season high 19 points, ruins even their record at 3-3. Three and three. Cincinnati against Arkansas. The president checking out his favorite team. But his favorites were not getting it done. Jackson Jolson with a slam, 18-14 Cincy. Then Burton, Darnell, hits the three. Cincy by nine at the break. And more from Burton. He's feeling it from the right side. And Mr. Burton has the green light. Down it goes from the left side. Burton with 21 points for the Bearcats. Mr. President, I'm sorry. Your team lost 82 to 67. Danny Fortson had 20. Cincinnati 4-0. Arkansas drops to 4-3. Duke against Michigan. Pick it up. Tied at 75. Lewis Bullock says it's untied. Michigan up three. Duke responds to Jeff Capel. He is capable from out there. We're tied at 78. Maceo Baston, the big man, in the lane. Got to guard him. He hangs, alters the shot, and hits. Wolverines would go up five. The Devils turn. Down three, less than a minute to go. Chris Collins, the coach's son, strokes him. And we're tied. The Blue Devils think they're going to win this. But Lewis Bullock says, not so fast. Hits his free throws. Duke down two. Collins going for three and the win. Oh, that was partially tipped as Baston got a finger on an air ball. He tries one more time in the final seconds. He's short on the three, and Michigan holds on for an 88-84 victory. Michigan snapping a six-game losing streak against Duke. Baston with a career-high 26 points. And Tim Duncan, he had 14 points, 14 boards, and nine assists. Just missed the triple-double as Wake Forest defeated Florida 77-73. You saw the Michigan and the Duke score. And we are at halftime between Penn State and Penn. 46-27 Nittany Lions back with NFL action in just a moment. Natural ability can only take you so far. Equipment counts for a lot. I'm always checking out new ideas. You have to to stay competitive. That's what I like about Pert Plus. Cleans and conditions in one step. No messing with two bottles. I get great results. No hassle, no fuss. Eventually, we all cross the finish. The winners just find a better way to get there. Pert Plus, great hair, no fuss. Hitachi UltraVision destroys the myth that there's nothing like the real thing. So get real with Hitachi and let the games begin. Hello? Attention theater buffs. With its ultra clear, ultra bright, ultra sharp picture, Hitachi UltraVision asked the question, to be real or not to be? Bet you always thought Hamlet asked that. UltraVision home theater, TVs, VCRs, camcorders, only from Hitachi. Sir, they're in the shapes of little portal. And when you walk, they bark. Shopping for the holidays? We have two gigabytes, 16 megs of RAM. We have a suggestion to help you through it. It's virtual reality, Max. Look out, we're being invaded by spacemen. Come to Wendy's for a delicious Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. It's a whole breast fillet, Monterey Jack, and a dollop of creamy ranch dressing blended with bacon. That way, everyone gets something they love for the holidays. Come to Wendy's for a Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich today. The Vikings are thinking playoffs. The Browns are thinking about the Yellow Pages and which moving company to call. They met today. The results rather predictable. Browns visiting the Metrodome. Bill Belichick, the latest misery. Third and goal for the Vikings. Warren Moon to the flat to Charles Evans. His first NFL touchdown, 10-0 Minnesota. Vinny Testaverde drops back in the pocket, steps up to elude the pressure. He fumbles. He's hit. He's hurt. Left with a pulled groin and a bruised hip. So on comes his replacement, Eric Zier. He was anything but on fire. Trying to go to Andre Rison with the bomb. Picked off Donald Frank. Nice play. Turned at just the right moment. One of four turnovers on the day for the Browns. Poor tackling by Cleveland there. You got two guys. Neither one of them could stop Chris Carter. 
turns it into a 50-yard reception to set up a field goal as the Vikes go on to win it 27 to 11. Vikes have won five of six, upping their record to eight and six. Warren Moon, though, left with a bruised rib. No word on how serious that injury is. Chargers leading the Cardinals 28-25. About a minute and a half to play. San Diego trying to even their record at seven and seven as they try to make a run for the playoffs. Don't forget, the Heisman Trophy we're about, oh, seven minutes away from that program starting the presentation ceremonies at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN1. Either catch that or the second half of our game here on the Deuce. And this is what Picture in Picture is designed for. You can catch them both simultaneously. 46-27, Penn State. We'll wrap things up in a moment. Have you been frustrated with auto insurance in the past? Are you paying too much? Do you understand your policy? At Consumer's Choice, we offer a new way to buy auto insurance. In 20 minutes, you can leave our office with a policy, ID cards, and access to 24-hour toll-free customer service. We provide competitive prices and easy payment plans for all drivers, even those in the assigned risk plan. Any vehicle, any driver, anywhere in Pennsylvania, Consumer's Choice is the Lehigh Valley's vehicle insurance specialist. selection and prices on Lee Jeans. Shop Lane Co. Drink what tastes good. Because television can make anything look delicious. Let's talk hockey, shall we? We got a good one on the deuce later this evening. The Blues and the Kings. That would be Hall versus Gretzky, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPN2. Right after that, NHL tonight with Linda Cohn. All the highlights of the day on the ice, including two goalies beating each other up in the Islanders game. We're at halftime between Penn and Penn State. Back for the second half of the shootout, Atlantic City. When we first came here, we saw that there were three swings, six horses, one slide, and one set of monkey bars for 120 children. We looked around, we realized these kids that come here really need a heck of a lot more. What do you suppose would happen if everyone decided to put just a weekend's worth of effort back into their community? Building, renovating. Whatever, things might just begin to change. Which is why on one weekend in June, a group of Saturn retailers, owners, and team members got together and built 12 playgrounds in the New York area. And while in the grand scheme of things, that may not seem like much, it's a start. at Burger King. Toy Story puppets from Disney's latest adventure movie now in theaters. Get all four high-quality puppets for your kids. $1.99 each with any great-tasting value meal. Bring ESPN 2's presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Saturn, a different kind of company different kind of car. Back in the Atlantic City, 
Convention Center with Digger Phelps, Dwayne Stats at the half with Penn and Penn State squaring off. It is a 46-27 halftime score, a 19-point margin so far. The backcourt really has told a story for Penn State. Shooting clinic. You yeah. got it. Oh, Pete Lasicki, can he shoot the ball? Watch, but the reason why, Big House, 45 sets that screen. You can't get through to guard him. Great rhythm. He's in a groove, 24 points. But watch my guy. I love Big House. Big House in the beef. Watch the shot by Penn. Now inside, Nate Grant comes up with a loose ball rebound. Tries to go against my guy. Here he is, Phil Williams. Set the screen. Ball, uh, uh, that's 220 bouncing off. Big House Williams. So he not only set screens, he just said, you know, I think Joe Paternal could use him. I'll tell you two things that has to be very encouraging for Jerry Dunn, obviously, when you get the kind of outside scoring that they're getting. But the play of yeah. the big man is as he looks toward the Big Ten. Yeah. 25 rebounds. Absolutely. To, to 11 for Penn. That's going to be a factor in the Big Ten because once they get a couple other kids back, Aaron Jack, the freshman, 6'8", 215, but the other kid, the senior, Matt Gaudiel, who really, really is, I think, the balance of this team that you wait with a backcourt that has great depth, but more importantly, a frontline leadership, and Matt Gaudiel, who's got a stress fracture, will be out until next Sunday. And you add that to this lineup, Penn State, I mean, you look at the Big Ten, we're talking maybe three teams right now we look at Michigan Iowa Illinois big wing over Duke they've got to be in the hunt for an NCAA bid and you look at three-point shooting eight out of 12 for Penn State from three-point range in that first half Penn has the basketball to start the second half and Jamie Loren brings it into the front court and Ira Bowman Bowman goes Go to the, to the glass yes. and up and in now Penn's not dead yet I'll tell you something about Fran Duffy at halftime they'll adjust they'll figure out how to shut down and just keep blue on the city and let the other guys be they just got to block out and get some rebounds things can happen for the Quakers Earl and the ball loose. There's Bowman. Bowman and Earl down the lane and a foul against Dan Earl. But that's the, that's what you call intensity. You start a second half. And we've seen a lot of games where teams have had 20 point leads, 16 point leads. Next thing you know, it gets to 12 to 10 to 8. Momentum goes back to the Quakers. And it sends Ira Bowman to the line. Ira Bowman. The biggest lead for Penn State in that first half was 21. And Penn comes out trying to chip into a 19-point halftime deficit. And Bowman misses the first of two. Sometimes as a head coach, you hate a big lead in your first half because the players get a little compensant, you know, um, complacent, complacent in the second half. And, and what happens when you're complacent, the mindset doesn't change. And you as a coach try to motivate, but the complacency just adds to a deficit where the other team gets back in a hunt. Bowman hits this one. Three straight points for the Quakers. 46-30. Earl. Bowman really playing deep. And Lyron's on the city like Lou. Earl draws a crowd. Now Pooh, Pooh, Pooh puts it up Ooh. and in and is fouled by and Guthrie. One. Wow, was that a power move for a lean and mean guy? They say Booth. Booth at 6'11", a little better than 200 pounds. Yeah, but Wiry extension. but tough. Watch great the extension. arms. Great extension of the arms and gets it off after the foul for a three-point fly. Light fire with fire. Go inside. They have great hopes for Calvin Booth before he's finished at Penn State. Jerry Den was talking to me before the game about what Booth can bring to the table. They like his development as they bring him along this season. Should be a solid frontline player by midseason in the Big Ten. Back up to 19. Frank Brown. He can get hot too. He has not showed what he can do yet in the first half. Frank Brown can score. Bowman goes to Krug trying to go over Booth. Rolls off. No good. And Phil Williams could not handle the rebound. Out of bounds it goes. When a guy tries to block your shot, the best way to take that away is go through his face with the ball. Don't fade away where you get his arm to block it. Go through him and he'll back off. Bowman inside the lane misses the jumper. You know, the That's what hurts him. Yep. Man. Dan Earl. Easy. This is Booth. Krug. We're going to have a charge. Krug's really tough kid. Sheldon Penn Charter High School. Goes in. Now watch his defense. Plants himself. Takes it from Booth. Krug will do that. Krug will play defense and offense and rebound. Good job, Mike. Let's go. 
Tell you what, next four minutes, it's going to be interesting to see what Penn can do to cut this down. Cut it down. Get it to 12 10. It's 19 at the moment as Jamie Lyron. Off to Coleman. And Lyron. Good play, give and go right to the basket from Bowman to Lyron. That was Penn driving more to the basket versus the shooting ball. outside. That was an adjustment by Fran Dumphy at halftime. Penn State a little lazy on D right now. Secunda rims it out. Lyron down and back the other way for Penn. He wanted a bounce pass low for Krug, but it's kicked and it will belong to Penn. Here comes Nat Graham into the game for Penn. Booth's going to depart in favor of Jeremy Metzger. But Metzger and Graham are identical. I think both of those guys will just really, really play equal. Physical players, rebounders, good defense. Brown's out of the game for Penn. The inbound of Bowman. Trapped in the corner and out of bounds. He deflected it off Secundo over there. Remember Bowman, truck solid player, Ivy League player. Lyron floats it out front for Tim Krug. Pops it right back to Lyron. At the line. You've got Graham, baseline jumper, won't go. Bowman tried to keep it alive, but Secunda comes up with it for Penn State. Down to the baseline and a whistle coming against Graham on the hole. Nat Graham charged with the personal foul. Well, you don't need to commit personal those fouls foul early in the second half Graham because when it counts from 10 minutes down to eight, Fran Duffy knows that second. you get him in a one-on-one -on -one and two shots. If you got a chance to catch up the last two minutes of the game, these fouls hurt you now. The inbound, Earl. Now Metzger with a jumper, and Metzger hits one. Jeremy Metzger. Metzger. Up to 19 again. Bowman back out Lyron. Lyron underneath. Good pass. Guthrie. Real good pass by Lyron. Found the open man. No charge. Metzger came out though. Took the D. Guthrie made the start. The 6'9 senior today. Touch it to 17. Here's Williams underneath. Taking the pass from Secunda. Williams <laughs> with two. The pass is giving the ball off score. Bill Williams. Across the ball, and a Lyron again. Krug comes out. Around Williams, off the front of the rim. Secunda with a rebound. And that's Penn's weakness, especially Krug shooting outside. There's no offensive rebound. Oh, good Loose play ball, by Krug. and it's going to go the other way. And Krug and Lasecki battling, and Penn will come away with it. Donovan Williams. Donovan Williams reports into the game. Replacing Glenn Secunda. And Kapitanovich reports into the game for Penn. You see yeah. the rebounding margin that's there. The game. You're right. And that's what Penn can't overcome because of the size factor. But if they get hot shooting the perimeter shots, a couple threes, you get back in it. Kapitanovich in there in the place of Guthrie. They're driving. See, I like them driving the ball more. Get yourself in foul trouble. Get Lasicki in foul trouble. Get anybody in foul trouble. A lot of time left. 16-32. Dumpy's really working on the sidelines, trying to figure a way to get back in this game. So Lasicki charged with the third team foul this half. Fatanovich, now Bowman. It's good for Lyron. Nice move. Good screen set by Bowman. Get him open. Field goal by Jamie Lyron. 53-36. Dan Earl working. Lasecki. Lasecki with 24 points at the half, and he is held by Lyron out front. And you don't need those fouls. And, and that foul hurts you later. And, and Dumpy knows. They look for a little zone. If you get in foul trouble, but you got to know where Lasecki is as well as Earl's penetration. Earl had five assists in the first half, so he knows what to do with the ball. Donovan Williams inbounding to Earl. Metzger, Metzger had a step there, missed the shot. Proved the other way. Lyron, a long pass for Katanovich. Bowman was pushed underneath, and Graham came up with the ball and put it through. Yeah, big house down the floor. That isn't like uh, the game he feels. Limping a little bit on his way back down to Corey Dunn. And Earl. Drive the lane. It's 
deflected, but Williams is there trying to put it in, and we have a whistle with 15-29 left to play. And a hold here. He's going to shoot the fouls, but I mean, he's going to come out after that because he, he went First down and down on the floor in that game just going to score. Kapitanovich charged with the foul, and Phil Williams is this one. He came in one of six from the line this year. Don't matter. This is not his job description. His job description is just rebound, take up space, and keep people out of the paint. He's done that tonight. Damian McKnight replacing Dan Earl. Williams with another one. That's not going to go. And he's going to the game. He's on the Bowman for three. Yes. yes. All you need, get the freeze going. Get the freeze going. Still can't get Williams out of the game. Man. Yep, still in there. Bowman's trying to get back to Philly, and his buddy Eric Williams is playing with the Celtics. They grew up together. Donovan Williams. The second. Oh, my. Can't keep hand up in his face. They can put it on the floor. 55-41. Byron down to the baseline, denied that by McKnight. Grand. Metzger up and to the glass. It's good for Tim Krug. Krug is so tough. 6 9, 2 30, and puts it on the floor, goes to the hole. Key defense possession right now for Penn. Metzger trying to go to the hoop. That ball is. Blocked and knocked out by Krug. It's a 55-43 ball game with 14-14 left to play, and we have a timeout on the floor. All kinds of mortgages for all kinds of homes. Domino's ultimate deep dish gets quite a reaction. Rings. A thick crust cheese melted to the edge. Call for a large Domino's deep dish with one topping, just $9.99. We were called an experiment. But what someone figured out is that there's something more important than machines if you want to make a good car. It's about people and giving them ownership in the product they're building. And if you have 8,000 people making the right decisions individually with the company and the car in mind, then you have 8,000 people that own that car and every car that goes out. That's the way I feel. Tonight feels kind of weird, but it's a good weird. I can feel it in my bones. This is not going to be your run-of-the-mill, laundry-doing, pizza-eating kind of night. I will not be exercising tonight, or philosophizing, or organizing. What I am going to do is look for women who look like trouble, and I'm going to flirt with them heavily. Because tonight, I'm not just drinking beer. I'm gulping life. I'm going to eat the night alive. What are you going to do? Bolson ice. Step outside. I wish this could last all night. All night, night, night. Duracell. Oh, it can. And tomorrow night, and maybe the next night, and the following day. <laughs> the Copper Top. No battery is stronger, longer. Penn State led by 19 at the half. Penn cutting that to 12. Penn State will have the basketball here. Tim Krug, you know, as a sophomore, he shattered the rim in pregame warm-ups against Brown. Delayed the game two hours in the palestra. This time, he just kisses the glass, as Bill Raftery would say, for a little layup, too. We're back in the hunt. Down to 12. That's Phil Williams. Getting that ankle work done. Jared Stevens into the game for him. Lasecki trying to inbound. Finds it into Metzger. Yeah, and the best guard is being contained this half by Lyron, number three, against Lasecki, who's only got one score versus the 24 he had in the first half. Lasecki over Lyron, rolls the rim and out, and Krug is there for a rebound. Well, he got a chance to close to within. Perhaps 10. Natanovich over there in the corner out to Lyron. Lyron for two. It will not drop. 
Donovan trying to rebound and is fouled from behind by Donovan Williams. Now this is now bounds underneath too, which helps Penn. Penn really worked in shooting around today for out of bounds plays underneath. Watch the inside screens on the out of bounds play. But on the replay, you notice Earl's coming back in. Earl for McKnight. Replay. Watch the offensive rebound. Going up strong. Grab it off the glass. And here's Williams on the back. Secunda is back in for Penn State as well. Replacing Donovan Williams. That's for three. No good. Cruz. Cruz all over. Graham off to Lyron. Baseline is Cruz. Over Stevens, and it's partially blocked. Metzger comes down. Tough possession for Penn. Big basket they needed to cut it to 10 and maybe nine. They get Earl back in with running the show, the assist player with the Sitki looking to get open for a shot. Secunda inside. We're going to have a charge. Krug already dropped the charge on Glenn Secunda. Already like that ball from the weak side. Already baby on a replay. Let me take a look. Oh, Artie, baby. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, the kid got there. Krug did get there for the charge. <laughs> he winks at me on the side. Oh, good. Artie and I used to have a lot of fun in a reverie. Boy, that's a call I think he got it for <laughs> Jerry Dunn sitting there like, what was that all about? Came from right field to make that call. Then with another chance. Krug along the baseline. A jumper oh, not going to go. And Konovich trying to keep it alive, but Lasecki comes up with it. Now to Earl. Earl front court. Off to Lasecki, right back to Earl. Into the right corner. Secunda spinning to the baseline. Out front, and it's going to go into the back court. Earl goes back to get it, and the I violation I don't know if turned I'd the wait. ball over. I'll tell you why. Now Penn can run an out of bounds play underneath where they're good scoring versus touch it back here in the top of the circle, which means side out of bounds. Let's see what Dumpy runs a, to get a scoring play. That was Earl May man made a bad decision on where to touch the ball at that time. Been very good on out of bounds plays. Ball it in there, Lyron. Looking for a screen, each side. Yep, there's Bowman. Uh, Bowman. He elevates himself and puts it up and in to make it a 10-point game. That's why Earl should have picked that ball up sooner. It gave Penn an opportunity to get it to 10 and get the crowd in it now. Bowman got some good hang time on that jumper. And yes. they're going to have a charge coming here. Dunkey may need a timeout. Earl offense, but I think right now, Jerry Dunn may think about a timeout. Oh, the charge against Dan Earl. Good drive. Watch the defense. Oh, good feet. Yes, the foot was there. Left side was there. Bowman. Ira Bowman steps in and takes a big charge. Good defensive play. Big possession now for Penn. Confidence is back. They've cut it in half. we got a game. And Penn State in the neighborhood of 15 turnovers now. Lyron. Bowman darts in. Back out. Now Lyron. Byron will put it up over Earl, not going to go, and there's a rebound for Secunda. A 10-point spread right now. We saw in the first game, Anthony Pieper was forgotten in the second half against Marquette. This game, we're seeing where number 32, Pete Lasitsky, has not really been in the offense. Bill, here you go. He shows it off to Secunda, and he misses the shot underneath. Ball loose, puts it up again. It's not going to go on a whistle against Penn. Interesting, two games back to back where the key player has been left out. First at 24 24 in the first half has Krug. two so far his here in the second half. That foul against Krug fourth. will be his third. Doesn't matter. Now Good Earl foul. leaves. Yeah. And McKnight enters the game. And this helps, All I think, Penn State. Yeah, good penetrator. Sitkunda. But the backward combination of Earl and the Sitki, the rhythm's there. But I, I think Penn State's got to work on the screens to have the first half of the Sitki, the shots. I'm just going to let this guy just make two points this half. And Secunda converts the first one from the line. Transfer from Syracuse. This one's not going to go. Moxley with a rebound for Penn. Confidence down for Penn State. Momentum back for the Quakers of Pennsylvania. Bowman. Kapkanovich puts it in. Kapkanovich with a pair. 56-47-9 now. Bowman goes for the steal and picks it from behind. Away from Secunda. Bowman with a pass, but it's picked off. 
Booth deflected it, and Lasecki came up with it. What patience now by Penn State to get Lasecki open. That's what Jerry Dunn wants. He doesn't need a timeout. He just needs a little patience on offense and get on the boards, which got you the big lead. Dunda off to Booth. They go underneath. Stevens. Now a jumper, McKnight, nothing. Lyron back. Moxley into the front court. Shoots it back to Lyron before he falls out of bounds. I'll tell you, credit to Trent Duffy at halftime because he just got these kids believing, be patient, cut it to 10, things can happen. Now they're back in the hunt to get really involved. Plenty of time left. Moxley has it off to Kapitanovic. Kapitanovic, Lyron. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Bowman, baseline. Over McKnight, not going to go. The ball is loose. Secunda up with this one. Secunda continues to play well for Penn State. Damian McKnight on the Nittany Lions. I'll tell you, Penn State missed the big house. They got to get him back in, but that ankle may be bad when you look at Phil Lee. It's good for Lasecki, a three. That's the patience that Jerry Dunn wants to get it going. 20-second timeout. A career night for Pete Lasecki at a three there. He had 24 at half. He now has 29 in the game. And it's 59-47. Credit Jerry Dunn for not really wasting a timeout for getting in that long discussion, but more importantly, get Lasicki open. And if we get Phil Williams back in, Bakehouse, to get the beef on the boards, then I think you neutralize Penn. Lasicki very talented. At the half, it was a 19-point spread. Penn cut it to nine at one point here in the second half. There's the big man, Phil Williams. But here's the kid right here, number three, Jerry Lyman. You know, when I saw what Lyman did defensively on Lasicki to start the half, Penn had great intensity coming out in the second half, and they shut down Lasicki where he wasn't coming off that screen. That excellent screen got him open. He'll hit that shot. Bowman. Penn, Penn playing a little zone. Penn State right now looking to play a 2-3 zone. Through from about 16, not going to go. And there's Moxley to come up with a loose ball. Back to Bowman. Underneath Krug. Great pass by Ira Bowman, finding you know who, Mr. Krug, for two. Another steal by Lyron. Lyron's back the other way. Secunda dropping back and deflects the shot, but we have a whistle as Lyron took it to the glass. 9:07 left. It's a 10-point game. Yeah, I guess I, you know, you, you, you're looking for a two-point intentional shot, two-shot intentional foul, but the right action. Watch the pass by Bowman inside. And Krug, so tough, so talented. I mean, a solid 6'9 player, a great Ivy League player. Typical of what the Ivy League brings to the table. Iron for two. And this is that first one. They try to close it to a nine again. And does. 59-50. Guthrie's going to report back into the game for Penn. Timeout on the floor. 9.07 to play. A nine-point game. Your own minor league baseball team. Roughly a million bucks. The Big Shaver. Roughly 18 cents. What do they have in common? They're both worth every penny. This is about how you go to sleep one day, running your business the same way you always have, and wake up the next morning with things like email, voicemail, PCs, pages, a new communications network for free. It's not a fairy tale, a myth, or a parable. This is about how things can really happen. This is about opening your eyes instead of closing them, and making a call instead of a wish. Network MCI, that's how. Yeah, it's true. People prefer the taste of Crispix mix to the usual party mix. But does that really make a difference? Look at the time. I've got to get to my aerobics class. Right. She's, <laughs> She's got a headache. Crispix mix has a special recipe. That unique Crispix cereal look. More Crispix mix? And that exceptional taste guests prefer. So this year, make Kellogg's Crispix mix and party on. 300 acres in Montana, 
around half a million dollars. The Bic Lighter, around 79 cents. What do they have in common? They're both worth every penny. Watch Jamie Lyman. Early in the second half, the intensity of defense where Pete Lisicki could not get open. Lyman really works hard, stays with him, recovers, but the help defense forces Lisicki to give it up, and he's standing there, give it back. I can shoot the three guys. Remember me at 24 in the first half. Now watch what happens when they know they need a big basket. Lisicki's out there. Lyman's late getting off the screen. They hit him for a big three. That's why Penn State's back up to nine. And Dan Earl. Carries the ball through the backcourt. Lasicki. And the big man Phil Williams in there as well. Lasicki. The poop. And poop makes a big bucket over crew. Yeah, you got the beef back in, but you also got the guy that knows how to score, Booth, because he shoots over everybody. So now Penn State up 11. Physical game inside boards and count for Penn State. Shut down the quickness and hot hand of the Quakers. Holman. Groove. Groove over Booth is partially deflected and Booth goes down. But credit Krug. But Booth, as you said, got a piece of the ball blocked, got the rebound, and there's why this freshman coming in, as lean and mean as he is, is a big factor with his, I think, rebounding and block shocking ability for Jerry Dunn's Penn State Nittany Lions. And that foul against Bill Guthrie of Penn. An 11 point game. 8-18 to play. Earl against Coleman. Bill Williams. Booth. And Booth guarded aggressively by Guthrie and we're going to have a whistle here. Well Penn State out of foul trouble. You, you want to save that one on one to where you get down to three or four minutes. You don't want to build up to where you get the team in a bonus where they're shooting two and that just allows them more confidence on that line. They have 17 fouls and is, now and the fourth foul on Guthrie. Right. On the line. And so puts Booth goes to the line. Yep. yep. And a good foul shooter. 75% for the year. He hits this one. Well, Penn can't get flat right now. I'll tell you, Jerry Dunn there in that timeout, they got the juices going, and that was very important. And the plus got Booth and Big House Wayne back in the game. And Booth converts them both. Well, this is their best five on the floor right now for the Lions. And they're playing a little zone, trying to force the Quakers to shoot it outside. Moxley. It will not go down, and the ball rebounded by Secunda. 7.52. Poop off the glass. Duffy may need a two. He may smell it. He's got to do something. He's got to make an adjustment quickly. They're back to 15. 65-50 the score. Moxley. Lyron. Lyron down toward the corner. Looking for Krug low baseline, trying to work against Booth. And Booth can test that. Well, he comes off that yes, bench and he, he just lit the spark that the Jerry Dunn was looking for. He doesn't want any part of the bench. His mother's an attorney. <laughs> she would like to be a judge. She wants the bench. He doesn't. Yeah, that's right. The 65 <laughs> 50. Booth has scored the last four for Penn State. Masicki. Right. Oh, my. For three, Lasicki, and just like that, it's a 68-50 spread. 18. And timeout, Penn, 6.59 to play. Penn State by 18. I'm Mike of MTA Schools, and we train people in just three weeks to pass the CDL exam, just three to four weeks to get their commercial driver's license, and every week, Representatives from major trucking companies come to us looking to fill great paying jobs. This year we're looking for 250 MTA graduates. We're looking for 500. We are looking for 120. 300 for my company. You can be one of them. Trucking companies are hiring experienced and inexperienced drivers. Don't wait. Call now. Hey, Art, have you ever really thought about it? 11 guys line up on one side of the field. Another 11 guys line up on the other side of the field. One of which has a piece of leather with air in it. Being chased by 11 other guys who's going to drag him to the ground and beat the stuffings out of him. And then they get up, do it all over again, again and again. For three hours. I know, Deacon. Ain't it great? Brought to you by Key Pontiac Nissan. 
team in the corporate basketball league. And being Sports Center, we take it pretty seriously. Go up, Juwan. Get to lose world. Let's go, Red. Push it, Pooh. Hey, this is Bull. You're bringing in ringers. You're going to cheer with the cards. Juwan Howard. Hey, just play the game. Just play the game, plumber boy. But uh, it's all good fun. We talk about coaches making adjustments and timeouts. Dan Earl, great point guard, finds Booth inside, gets it up, scores. Booth gets the electricity, but credit Jerry Dunn for getting his five best players in this game on the floor. I'm talking about my man, 45, Big House Williams. I'm talking about, yeah, getting our guy, Pete Lasitki, a three, and that's why it's blown out to 18, and Penn needed a timeout. Eight three-pointers tonight. That's a school record for Penn State. Byron to Bowman, an 18-point deficit for Penn, and there's the turnover. Yeah, you don't need that at this point. Confidence factor right now. Penn State back in it, the right team on the floor. Quakers made the run, had that two-minute spurt, which turned into a negative. You can see the head start to go down a little bit. Grand Dumpy says, how many things can I do with this inexperienced team and get it going? But just keep teaching, Grand. you got an Ivy League team. And State is off for a 9 all run. Secunda for two. They will go by Secunda. 70-50. Lyron. Wants so an 11-point run here. Moxley. Not going to go. And Lyron grabbed it and is fouled. That's going to come against Glenn Secunda. So it'll go the other way here. More hoop action on the deuce tonight. Alabama-Birmingham takes on Western Kentucky at 8.30. UAB anticipating the return of the injured Carlos Williams, who was averaging 17 points and seven boards a game. Michael Fralix and Chris Robinson leading Western Kentucky. Tonight at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN2. Maddie Cope Cullen, uh, former Irish assistant head coach of Western Kentucky, did a great job last year trying to rebuild that to where they're going to compete against Arkansas Little Rocks, a team that I think in Jacksonville will compete for Western Kentucky. Lyron ends this 11-0 run as he converts both. Secunda now with four fouls at 70-52. And Earl against Bowman. Williams pops out to take the pass. Calvin Booth. Just like Penn State. They get Matt Gudio back in this lineup. They're going to be really a solid Big Ten team. Well, they have some depth. Yep. They're playing with some injuries right now. Earl. Secunda. Pass intended. A bounce pass for Booth. Out of bounds. Well, if you looked at if the pass went to Earl, then dump it down inside the booth, that little triangle theory to say high post wing, look down low, reverse it, then he gets it inside rather than force it and get the turnover. Byron reverses to the right side. Pop it to Bowman. He'll pop for three and hits. He has a couple threes tonight. The only three pointers of the night for Penn and Bowman has converted two. You know what's amazing about the NCAA tournament? There's two teams you don't want to play as a head coach in the first round. One you want to get in. You want to be one to 64. Then you look at the bracket and say, I don't want to play Temple, and I don't want to play the Ivy League winner in the first round. Believe me. No matter who it is, Penn, Princeton, this year Dartmouth can have the run. Ooh, the pass for Secunda. And a foul coming against Mike Brown. Brown's going to be a tough play. The gutsy kid does a lot of good things. I like his game. Personal foul, number 15, Frank Brown. Watch Danny Earl. Good point guard, smart. Gets the bounce pass. Looks weak side. Reverse it. Booth finds him back in. Goes up and under. Yes, that's good balance when you look at what Penn State can do. Very unselfish. Jerry Dunn does an excellent job of just creating a rhythm of this team. That's it, Jerry. Keep talking those officials. Get to know Artie. Artie's a good guy. You'll like him in that big ten. Artie's down. Secunda misses. Round to the rebound. Byron front court. The baseline around Earl. Off to Krug, and it's good. Krug's got to be all right. He, he's just very aggressive. He has 18 tonight. Bowman has 19 for Penn. Dan Earl front court for Penn State. 
Oh, good read. Headed to the bucket. Oh, dishes yes. off for Booth. Oh. Come in, and we have a whistle. The field goal is good. Counts the assist. bucket for Calvin Booth. You know, but Earl, you know, what's amazing about Dan Earl, you get him driving that side. You know, we talk about Stockton and Price. Watch this move. Watch him go up. Read the defense. Great pass. What Bobby Early movie. For 10 14, Garrett Price. It's amazing guards and backcourts as we look around this country. Mark. We're talking about Georgia Tech with. With, you know, with Marbury and Drew Berry the balanced line, there, and you talk line. about how Carolina's guards and the surprise of what they have going with Dante Calabria and Jeff McGinnis. But I'll tell you, watching Penn State today, uh, their back, their backcourt, with what we've seen, is going to be a great challenge in the Big Ten. Here's Proof. It's not going to drop. Williams with a rebound. Good house. Booth, by the way, has 16 after converting that three-pointer. Booth, and he is grabbed on his way to the bucket. Yeah, but for freshman, this kid's got a lot of confidence. Yes, he does. Comes out here, six eleven, about two hundred pounds, from Ohio, Reynoldsburg, Ohio. Just, <laughs> I like what he does. Kapitanovich yeah, leaves in favor of Romanchik, and Booth is at the line. See a lefty that she's for another. Spreads his feet while the line gets his knees into the shot. Perfect from the line tonight. There's six my guy, six. Matt. Yeah, it is good, yeah. Look at him. He's got that coach on. Oh, yeah, yeah, he does. He's got the glass. He thinks he's good. Cool, he's a funny kid. And I'll tell you, he's, he's the leadership on the court. They haven't even started yet with what Penn State's going to be. This kid can play. He had a bad back in this last year. Stress fracture the past week. He'll be back next Sunday against Tennessee Chattanooga. Krug got a man into the air, and to the bucket he goes. A whistle. As Krug started to drive the lane with 4-13. And you can see we're great guards. We talk about Maloney and Allen. Matt Maloney, Jerome Allen leaving after what great careers they had for the Quakers. Quakers a year ago, December, they beat Ohio State at home, go beat Michigan in Michigan. And, you know, that's that's what you go through as a coach. Fran Dumpy knows that. But he's a teacher. He loves Penn. He belongs at Penn. And uh, this team will be... I think a competitor in that challenge for the Ivy League NCAA bid. Here misses the shot. He was fouled by Lasecki. He has 18 tonight. And misses two. The rebound. Lasecki. Out of Dan Earl. A little better than four minutes to play in the game. Earl. Working against Bowman, takes it inside. <laughs> I think that was an ass. I, I, do I do too. That was not a shot, that was a pass to Booth. You talk about smart guard play. Bowman. Crew. It's good for three. Oh, world. Ten crew. I'm serious. I love his game. 79 60. And Earl. <laughs> the big house. Bill Williams against Cruz. Ball on the floor. Now it's loose. Bowman is there to cover up on it. Bowman and Earl battling for the loose ball. And on the exchange, the ball belongs to Penn State. Bowman a little slow in getting up with 3.25 left on the clock. We have a timeout on the floor. 79-60 Penn State. jeans mine were dirty if you don't have them you can't wear them dear Dave I was making up my holiday list when I suddenly realized mm, I already have everything and it struck me 
I haven't had one of your delicious Monterey Ranch chicken sandwiches in a long time. That irresistible combination of Wendy's whole breast filet, creamy ranch dressing blended with bacon and Monterey Jack. I'd pay a million dollars to have one right now. Delivery. Wendy's Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. It's back. You talk about Bobby Hurley at Duke. Now, let's go about Danny Earl with Penn State. Drives the lane, knows that Calvin Booth is open. If the defense comes to him, oh, that's a pass for a slam. Calvin Booth, but give the assist to, you got it, Danny Earl. And Booth has 20 points tonight. Converting on the assist from Earl. Donovan Williams into the game now to Dan Earl. Lasecki for three. Three more for Lasecki. 72, 82 to 60 to score. Boy, will he light up eyes in the Big Ten this year. The shot by Romanchik, no good. That ball loose. Earl comes up with it on the floor. Now Donovan Williams down the sideline, and he's fouled by Jamie Lyron. 2.57 to play in the game. A 22-point spread. Well, Lasicki had that great first half. First He's had a great night, a career night. Calvin three, Booth has played so Andy well Lyra. for Penn State. Lasicki with 35 third. points, nine three-pointers. <laughs> <laughs> Two shots. I'll tell you, it, it's just Ford rhythm and shooting. He had a great year last year for Penn State in the Big Ten. Now the confidence factor, I and mean, that's what the NIT does for you. You know, you look at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech will, I think, challenge UMass. UMass, everybody's excited, but you watch Virginia Tech be a threat in the Atlantic 10 as a new team in that conference. Donovan Williams converts one of the two. Jared Price for Penn. And a Guthrie. Price is 6 1 sophomore. Go inside Roman check. Yeah, but not against Big House. You can't go near my guy, Big House. Phil Williams, Booth, I'll tell you. Good talent really coming together. Good drive to the baseline. Watch Booth come over. Go for a piece of that. Because he's going to block it. You know, he's not really. I mean, he's got the lankiness and the quickness. Obviously, not the talent of a Joe Smith who played in Maryland, but you know, he's got that frame that as he plays more games and gets experience playing a great conference, I, I really think Booth is going to be a solid player. And Calvin Booth's just a freshman yep. from Rennysburg, Ohio. And speaking of recruiting, where are you going, Big Ten country from Ohio State? He's at Penn State. Roman Jeff converts this one. Well, they had a couple of pretty good recruits. They got uh, Jared Stevens out of the Detroit area. Right. They Big got him country. because uh, they're a Big Ten school. Well, Michigan, uh, Michigan State had Booth. players, right? And, and talking to Jerry Dunn about that, he says, so, hey, we had a good shot to get him because Michigan State, Michigan loaded, and they just felt that they can get this kid, so he decides to go to Penn State. And that was why Penn State, I think, went into the conference to get recruiting in the Midwest, Ohio, Michigan. Uh, Earl off to Booth, who starts to go to the basket and is fouled by Roman Chick. How about this for a night? So far, Lasecki with those 35 points. Nine out of 10 from three-point range. <laughs> 13 out of 15 overall. <laughs> wow. What can you do? I mean, one thing I would do right now is get him out of game, Jerry. I don't need him hurt. you got some games coming up. He's been out there long enough, Jerry. I know you're nervous as a head coach. Talking before you guys, what's the difference of transition when you're an assistant to head coach? He's just there. He's just, now I know how Parker used to get on me about little things. I understand as a head coach, but now my assistants are getting it from me, so the role, the role is reversed. Ball check against Williams. Pass out to Guthrie. Floats it across to Moxley. Moxley. Not going to go. Romanchek keeps it alive. Ooh. Price has it deflected. Ball down to Lasicki. Lasicki, oh, to Booth, and it's not going to go. They battle along the baseline. Last touch by Booth for the minute 44. <laughs> it goes the other way. Yeah, watch the pass, though. It's there. Maybe a little low, the rhythm. He's looking at Pete. Pete's looking at him. Calvin says, all right. Pete says, get there, Calvin. i got to get you for this lob. Slam it, slam it. Oh, that little low. Timing. Yeah. Cedric Laster into the game. Replacing Moxley for Penn. Earl departs. 
Yeah, but I want to Penn State in favor of McKnight. Jerry, get 32 out, Jerry. Hello, Jerry. Jed Ryan in the game for the Quakers. He replaces <laughs> Bill Guthrie. Get, and get, Losecki is still out yeah, there. Get him out, Jerry. Hello, Jerry. I don't think you want him getting hurt. Keep that arm the way it is, man. Don't wake that arm up. Shoot those threes. Here's a jumper. Not going to go. The shot by Ryan. Knight back the other way for Penn State. With a minute 25 to play. See, I used to say that to my sister. I've got the point right now. She's coaching on a summer. She watched the same game. I'm watching this game. not over yet. <laughs> and that's the first year rookie coach. And there's over a minute left to oh, play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Across the court to Donovan Williams. The house got that bad ankle. I get the ice on him. Big house Williams. I don't want him to baseline and he puts it up and in. Sure, I think you got it, Jerry. <laughs> 86 61, under a minute to play. Oops. Laster. Ryan. Got it. Roman check lets it fly. Lasecki with a rebound and 38 seconds to play. McKnight in the backcourt. Is foul reaching around as Cedric Laster. First Tell you, Penn made the run, but the timeout where Jerry Dunn came out in the zone, got his best players on the floor who were playing today. Booth, Williams, of course, Lissitke gets back in, gets a shot. Earl takes it over. And that was the difference when Penn cut it on the double fingers after being down 20. Give Fran Dumpy credit for coming back with this kid. How about this one? Career night, 35 points for Lissitke. Chris, Chris Rogers enters the game. On the line. McKnight converts this one. McKnight for another. Metzger back into the game for the closing seconds. And McKnight sinks both. 88 61 here. Last year, this is everything. That ball is headed out of bounds, belonging to Penn State. Been trailed by 19 at the half, by as much as 21 in that first half. There's a ball out of bounds, a bounce pass by Donovan Williams. It goes back to Penn. Hold your spot. Penn still looking for that game, January 6th with Princeton. The Ivy League matchup. And a baseline jumper. No good by Graham. Metzger rebounding. McKnight in the backcourt working against Laster. The final seconds on the clock down to five. And Penn State will go to five and oh as the buzzer sounds ending this one. And it is an 88 to 61 final. Penn State now 5 and 0 as the Pennsylvania Quakers dropped to 1 and 3. They made a run in that second half, closed it to 9, but dropped this one to Penn State 88-61. We'll be back in a moment. We'll talk with Pete Lasecki following this. Other scoring. Went Secunda 9. No one can save you now. Hey, bet we could. Fools, we will defeat you and take your Miller Lite. Not if we choose the weapon. Paper football, very clever. You get off. Mm, it's good. We are safe. When you've got the great taste of an ice cold Miller Lite, life is good. You are worthy opponents. Let us celebrate. I know a good sports bar around the corner. Life is good. <laughs> I wish this could last all night. All night, all night, all night. Duracell. Oh, oh it can. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow night, and maybe the next night, and the following day. <laughs> the Copper Top. No battery is stronger, longer. This holiday season, don't let a fortune pass you by. It's the Discover Card Big Payback. Just use your card for your chance to win one of eight quarter of a million dollar prizes. It pays to discover the card with the big payback. Lane, Spalding, all scores. Got Pete Lasicki here. I mean, you've got to feel all world. But I want to show you this replay where in the first half you hit the three, and then you give me this Michael Jordan smile like, I can't miss. Uh, to tell you the truth, 
I didn't really see it, get a good look at the basket. Uh, he was in my face, and you know, I, it was probably my third one in a row. And you know, I was just, I was just feeling it. Great feeling with your backcourt, Danny Earl. Great point guard, but you know how to get open. They forgot about you the first 10 minutes of the second half. What happened to get you back into those big points to put the lead back to 20? Well, they were really denying me well, especially uh, the number three. I don't know what his name is, but uh, you know, I was just working hard, and eventually they, they laxed a little bit, and I got open. So tell me about Coach Gunn. Dunn. You make the transition. Jerry Dunn comes in. A lot of confidence in him. A lot of confidence in his team. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like Coach Parker never left. You, know, you would never know there was a transition. It's, it's been great, and uh, we've been working hard, and Coach Dunn's been a big part of it. Well, Pete, go ice up your arm. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, you got to relax. Nice ride back to State College. Yeah. Enjoy the Big Ten season. All right, thanks, Mr. Phelps. Jerry, my man. <laughs> Jerry, no, wait, wait. I'm trying to tell you. Get him out. Get him out. Yeah. You, you still, I don't want him to get hurt. Yeah, I know. I, you know, it's uh, Crane is a great coach, and... These kids play hard. The game's never over. So, I, you know, I just wanted to make sure that you know, <laughs> yeah. we were in a good First situation. First year, Coach, I did the same yeah, thing. You know, and your assistants are probably saying to get these guys out, get in the way. You guys watching the same game I'm watching? The assistant coaches now, Jerry. You're just an assistant for 12 years. What's the difference between head coach and assistant when the assistant now has different responsibilities as a head coach? Well, I'll tell you, you go from a suggested, suggestive mode to a uh, decision mode, and that's been the biggest difference. You know, when you walk out here, you know, that uh, whatever shows up to play the game is, is, is a reflection upon you as a head coach, and so you want to make sure you get it done. Well, you've got great balance in this team. I didn't realize the depth. you got to look at Booth, Big House, Williams. Booth's a freshman. They play like they're experienced players. Well, I'll tell you, I think that's the beauty of our team. we got guys that can step up night in and night out and, and help each other out. We don't have to depend on one particular guy to uh, carry the load for scoring, and, and that was pretty obvious tonight. We get that play all year. I think we're going to be a pretty good team. I'm very happy for you, Jerry. Got a lot of respect for your game. I've known you as an assistant. Congratulations. Good luck in the Big Ten this year. And I'll take it right back now to Dwayne. You've got the show. It's yours. Thank you. All right, Digger. And the Atlantic City shootout is history for this year. LaSalle winning the first game 68-65. Penn State defeating Penn 88-61. For Digger Phelps and our ESPN crew, I'm Dwayne Stats. So long. Stay tuned for Larry Beal and Sports Mash coming up. Thanks, guys, and hello, everybody. Larry Beal in the studio as we take you up to tip-off between our next game, Western Kentucky and Alabama-Birmingham. In the meantime... We smash. Covers all the weekend action with so many games. Who has the time to catch them all? Now you do with Scoreboard Central. Your weekend spot on the dial for all the scores, highlights, and more. Scoreboard Central. No more waiting. Get what you want when you want it. Informative and timely. Scoreboard Central. Tired of the same old TV? Switch to Sports Channel. It's packed with action and sports of all kinds. Brought to you from around the region and the globe. All day, every day. Sports Channel has your hometown teams. Plus sports you want to see 24 hours a day. It's all the teams. All the time. Always on Sports Channel. From around the region or around the world, if it's sports, it must be Sports Channel. Historic Recreation Hall on the campus of Penn State University, a building full of basketball memories. The home of Nittany Lion basketball since 1929, this house of thrills will soon give way to the new Jordan Center. Today, we bring you one of the final three games that Penn State will play here. <laughs> Hall in University Park, Pennsylvania, the campus of Penn State University. We welcome you to today's game between the Penn State and the Lions and the Moccasins of UT Chattanooga. Hello, everyone. I'm Frank Gardenia, and we uh, have an excellent matchup here today in a year of change for Penn State basketball. In a couple of weeks, this program will move from Rec Hall into a new building across campus, and also there's a change in the coaching boxes. Former head coach Bruce Park Hill is now in the administration and working with me on today's telecast. And Bruce, I know you're excited about your successor, Jerry Dunn. I really am, Frank. I'm, I'm very happy with the change personally, and I'm so excited about the success the team's having. And uh, I hope Jerry's enjoying it more than I did. 
The Nittany Lions are off to a great start in Jerry Dunn's first five games, and two of the reasons why are the guards, Dan Earl and Pete Lasicki. Bruce, these guys are having sensational shooting starts. I think these guys are one of the best backcourts in the country, Frank. I don't think necessarily from an athletic standpoint, but I feel from a skill standpoint, Danny and Pete are as good as they get. In a good intersectional matchup today, and they'll be facing the UTC Moccasins, led by an outstanding all-around player in Johnny Taylor. This guy can play every position on the floor, one of the better athletes in the country. Well, that's exactly right. Johnny Taylor brings great athleticism to the table. He also brings the ability to shoot, which we haven't seen yet, and I know Mac McCarthy feels like when he starts shooting the ball more consistently from the perimeter, he may have an NBA prospect on his hands. The Moccasins have struggled a little bit here early, but they've had some problems from a junior college standpoint mixing their chemistry together. They're very, they're very inexperienced, and when they mesh, they're going to be very good. You look at this situation, a big game for both teams. Penn State 5-0 taking on UTC, and we'll be back with the start of the game in just a few minutes. We need your help. I need your help. We need... College basketball on Sports Channel is brought to you by Core States and Core States Direct, the shortest distance between you and your money. Genardi's, where low prices and family pride make the difference, with 26 locations in Pennsylvania and Delaware to serve you. Herman's, we are sports. And by Keystone Health Plan East, the HMO you can lean on. For the first time on television, the original Handy Disc. Tough enough to cut a tempered steel file. So durable it comes with an unconditional lifetime satisfaction guarantee. Handy Disc cuts this tough construction brick and concrete block. Accurately cuts and shapes ceramic tile. Save time. Simultaneously cut shingles, tar paper, nails, and wood. Effortlessly sand paint off your house or boat. Easily grind rust off your car. Cut PVC without melting. Aluminum without loading up. Save money. Handy Disc sharpens tools like a pro. 15 years of experience and flexible abrasive wheel technology are crafted into every Handy Disc. Order your Handy Disc kit today, including two 7-inch and one 4.5-inch Handy Discs, mounting hardware, 8-page instruction booklet, and toll-free Handy Helpline. A more than $57 value for only $19.95. And don't forget, if you ever damage or wear out your Handy Discs, even if the damage is your fault, return it to us for a free replacement. Don't be fooled by cheap imitations. Order the original Handy Disc today. This season, when you're looking for great Sixers action and they're on the road, look to Sports Channel for exclusive away game coverage. Hit the road with the Sixers as they showcase new faces and returning stars. They may just catch their opponents off guard. So when you're home and the Sixers aren't, find great basketball action on Sports Channel. The Sixers home away from home. The Sixers battle the Minnesota Timberwolves tonight at 6 o'clock, exclusively on Sports Channel.